Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Hey kids, let's learn about the kingdom Protista in this lesson. So here we are going to see some of its characteristics along with common examples. So let's start with the common examples first. When we learn about the common examples, we see that it includes Clemidomonas, it includes chlorella, it includes amoeba, paramecium, then it also has a number of flagellates, dinoflagellates, what else? Well, it would have diatoms, slime molds, euglena and many many other organisms. Alright, so these are some of the common examples. Now we are going to see some of the common characteristics of the protista. When we learn about the common characteristics, what do we see? Well, the first important thing we will observe in here is that the protestants, these are unicellular eukaryotes. Okay, so after the monorans, we see that the protista, they have now become the eukaryotes, meaning that they now have a proper nuclear membrane. They have now the cell organelles which are covered with the membrane. Alright, so the membrane bound organelles are found in case of protista. The next feature we will see is that they are usually found or most of them they are found in aquatic habitat. Okay, now these organisms which are found in aquatic habitat, okay, in these we will observe that they are what you call planktons. Okay, so these protists which are found in aquatic habitat, they are called planktons. Now coming to the next characteristic, we will observe nutrition here. Nutrition is very interesting in case of protista. Why is that so? Because under nutrition you will see that they perform all the type of nutrition. Meaning that they are photosynthetic. At the same time you will see that they, are, they show heterotrophic mode of nutrition also. In which you can observe that they are saprophytic. Okay, they also show holozoic mode of nutrition. So, they show all the type of modes of nutrition. Alright, now one important thing in here to note down is that those organisms which are photosynthetic plus they have cell wall plus they have plastids. What are, what are they called as? Well, we call such organisms as phytoplanktons. What do you call them? These are phytoplanktons. So, phytoplanktons are such kind of protists which are photosynthetic in nature and they have a cell wall as well. But on the other hand, when you look at non-photosynthetic protists, okay, which do not have a cell wall, similarly they do not have a plastid, so, such type of protist are called zooplanktons. Okay, they are called zooplanktons. So, the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons. The phytoplanktons means that these are the plant like protist and the zooplanktons are animal like protist. Alright, apart from these, we have a special example here which is euglena. So, what is so special about euglena? Let's see. In euglena, we observe that whenever there is the presence of light, the euglena becomes photosynthetic. Okay? In the presence of light, the euglena becomes photo photosynthetic in nature. But in the absence of light, when the light is not there, in the absence of light, it will become holozoic or you will say 
this will act as heterotrophic in nature okay so this is a very special example of euglena which act as both which act which can act as autotrophic as well as heterotrophic in nature depending upon the presence or the absence of light all right so this was about the mode of nutrition next we will talk about the cell wall it may be present okay like we just learned that in case of photosynthetic or in case of you would say phytoplankton the cell wall is present but again there is a special example when we learn about the cell wall and this special example is called slime mold so what is so special about slime molds well in slime mold you will observe that during their vegetative phase okay during their vegetative phase the cell wall is absent the cell wall is absent during the vegetative phase okay whereas on the other hand during the reproductive phase during their reproductive phase this cell wall is present so isn't it interesting to see that in slime molds we just said that during the vegetative phase the cell wall is absent they are devoid of cell wall during the vegetative phase whereas the cell wall is present during their reproductive phase so we would say that they fall somewhere in the border line between having a cell wall or devoid of cell wall so this is an example where you can see such a type of case now next let's learn about some more characters so the other character we'll observe in here would be the cellular organization in the cellular organization you see that they have two envelopes what does that mean how come they have two envelopes in their cell well the first envelope is the plasma membrane so of course the cell is covered by the plasma membrane okay the second envelope when you see is the membrane bound organelles okay so the organelles which are present they are covered by membranes okay so some of the organelles or certain organelles they are covered by membrane so overall you would see that there are two envelopes the first envelope the primary envelope which is covering the entire cell is the plasma membrane other than that there are certain cell organelles which are covered by their own membranes now if you relate it with the case of monerans you would remember that in monerans there are no cell organelles present which are membrane bound all right but in case of protista you would see that there are organelles which are membrane bound all right now coming to the next when we learn about the cell organelles only let's say so in the cell organelles you would see that there are a number of organelles present which are membrane bound for example what can be the example these can be mitochondria in case of photosynthetic protista you can see these can be chloroplast or you would say the plastid right others can be endoplasmic reticulum okay so these are the number of organelles beside that the, there are many other which can be present which are membrane bound okay now next we will see about the respiration so when we talk about respiration in protista you would say that respiration is primarily it is primarily aerobic and in the aerobic forms of protista of course you can find mitochondria in there which helps in this aerobic or the cellular respiration to release energy all right so till now we have observed the type of cells present we have seen the nutrition we have seen the cell wall we have seen the cellular organization cell organelles respiration one again important thing that we will see here would be the flagella we had seen flagella in case of monerans we had seen that the flagella and monerans had a single strand 
ओके एंड इट वॉज मेड अप ऑफ फ्लैजल इन प्रोटीन बट इन केस ऑफ प्रोटेस्टा यू विल सी दैट योर दीज आर इलेवन स्टैंडर्ड दीज आर इलेवन स्टैंडर्ड विद एन अरेंजमेंट ऑफ नाइन प्लस टू ओके दे हैव एन अरेंजमेंट ऑफ नाइन प्लस टू वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू नोट डाउन इन यर इज दैट द फ्लैजला इन केस ऑफ दीज ऑर्गेनिजम इज मेड अप ऑफ ट्यूबुलन प्रोटीन do remember that in case of monerans we had learned that the flagella was made up of flagellin protein here it is made up of tubulin protein all right next what would we see we'll talk about the reproduction in reproduction you will observe that these organisms they show the both kind of reproduction it can be asexual and it can be sexual as well okay so this type of sexual reproduction basically it involves meiosis so unlike the sexual reproduction in bacteria where we had seen that there was no meiosis here the meiosis take place in case of sexual reproduction in protista but again no embryo is formed okay so this was all about the protista wherein you have seen that the protists they are unicellular eukaryotes okay they are usually found in aquatic habitat but apart from these they can be found inside us they can act as parasites also okay next we have seen the nourishment in nourishment we have seen that these can be photosynthetic or they can be heterotrophic so when they are parasitic basically they feed upon us right so they can be acto or endo parasite wherein they undergo the saprophytic or you would say they undergo the parasitic mode of nutrition all right next we have seen two examples of euglena and slime mold we have seen that euglena it can act as both photosynthetic as well as heterotrophic we have seen that slime mold they can possess a cell wall or they may not depending upon the life phase okay next we have seen the cellular organization the cell organelles but overall what we can say is that after moneran we can see a lot of advanced characters in case of protista so this was all about protista and its general characteristics explore more about the topics you love with topper subscribe now and keep learning